Ok. Donc là, on est en go live. Et euh, quand, en gros, quand tu ne m'entends plus, euh, ça veut dire que tu peux y aller. D'accord Donc on va dire à 3. 1, 2. Hello everyone and welcome to this session of Katia TV. Uh, my name is Nicolas Guérin. I'm part of the Katia R&D portfolio management team. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to present to you today uh, Stephen Structure Engineer, a, a new role and, and a new app also that we, we have in the, in the Katia portfolio. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm... <laughs> Bon, je me suis planté. On, euh, plouf, plouf, on, on, on refait. C'est pas grave. Tu recommences. Ouais. Et tu. Okay. C'est pas grave, là. Hein. Je veux dire, on enlève la première ouais, partie. Ouais, ouais, ouais okay. C'est ce que je me suis dit, c'était le plus simple. Ok. Un, okay. deux, trois. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, Katia TV session. My name is Nicolas Guérin. I'm part of the Katia RD uh, Roles Portfolio uh, Management Team. And I'm very happy today to present you um, a new uh, role and, and a new app we have dedicated to uh, Stephen Structure and, and the engineering of, uh, of this at the uh, concept preliminary design uh, stages. So without further ado, what is uh, Stephen Structure and what's the engineering of it? So Stephen Structure, uh, you know, you have plenty of examples. It's any time you have a, a skin or a panel Um, where you would want to control the thickness of it or uh, see what would be a good trade-off between uh, a thin skin and uh, underlying uh, uh, structure made out of uh, stiffeners like stringer, ribs, frames. Uh, you can find plenty of examples of that in the uh, aerospace industry uh, as well as marine and offshore and industrial equipment. So basically here the, the goal of this tool is to um, Uh, find the best balance between um, uh, uh, the shape, the external shape you need to, to respect, and uh, what could be the way to, to reinforce this structure uh, by playing on the, on the materials, playing on the thicknesses and the, and the stiffeners uh, properties. So typically, like for, for a wind turbine a blade or for a, a, the skin of an airplane, uh, the wing of an airplane, you would have, um, you would have a, a shape coming from, uh, from CFD or uh, any, other, uh, any other input. And a uh, structural uh, engineer would have to um, find the best uh, way to, to stiffen this part to sustain the, the structural loads. And this tool is, uh, is really here to um, help you uh, uh, converge quickly uh, on, on a, on a Uh, good compromise in terms of uh, uh, thickness materials and, and uh, uh, stiffening structure to achieve your, your goals. Here is a quick, uh, a quick video that would uh, illustrate uh, what I've just said. So here we have a new, uh, a new wing that's been uh, has been determined uh, through CFD and the structural engineer is asked to, to find the best way to, to stiffen it. So we go into the app uh, and uh, we, we start uh, defining on the, on the upper skin here uh, some cells. Uh, as you can see, it goes really fast. That's what we call the quick grid um, to, do a, to, do a, to create cells on your, on your uh, surface where you assign some uh, uh, materials and uh, thicknesses. So in this case here, it's composite uh, materials and we have predefined laminates. I'll go more in details into that later. And you start doing a first uh, uh, assessment, hypothesis, I would say, of uh, the material distribution on your, on your surface. You have a finite element model that's uh, built upon this definition right away. Uh, taking into account uh, for the section properties uh, directly what you've input uh, on, your, on your geometry. So it goes super fast and you can assess that you have uh, actually for each finite element the proper um, uh, stacking of, of, uh, of plies uh, with uh, 
uh, each orientation displayed here, the stiffness matrices computed, and um, you even have a, a view of the thickness uh, to make sure that you've input what you actually wanted to do. Once you have that, you can input it into a, a bigger uh, finite element analysis. Here you uh, utilize some pressure that you got from your CFD computation and you assign it uh, to your structural element uh, to, to perform a finite element analysis and uh, assess here in this case the displacement or whatever KPI uh, you, you, may, you may be interested in. So, in a nutshell, this role is uh, here to really boost uh, the convergence of your of your structure at the very early stages uh, uh, of conceptual or preliminary design, um, targeting, of course, the, the structural behavior of your of your part. Um, one of the key points is, of course, to offer here through the Stephen structure concept app uh, uh, what we call a all-in-one app, where you would have all your modeling and simulation mod sim uh, capabilities all packed in one uh, application so the, the goal of course is to boost the exploration of your of your design to find quickly the best compromise uh, uh, including of course capabilities uh, as you'll see to reduce your model uh, like the structure we saw earlier can be turned into a, a just a beam elements for uh, much faster uh, simulation and therefore a faster convergence of your of your properties. Um, it's fully compatible with uh, Katia and, and Simulia portfolio in terms of uh, uh, geometry, modeling, and also um, simulation. And uh, and it's it's a good tool uh, basically to go anywhere from a concept phase to, to the detail phase uh, working on the same model. So I'll go a bit more in detail uh, now into, into the, the phases of this, of this role. With this little workflow you can see on the screen right now, where we would uh, start from, a, from a, just a surface. Uh, we'll define a bit more the, the various laminates we can, we can put. Uh, we'll assign them with a quick grid to the surface. Uh, also position the, the stiffeners and the structures and then go into the finite element world uh, uh, to, to, to define the, the loading it has to sustain and then converge. At any point, of course, as it's all in the platform and integrated, we can, we can of course, come back and change whatever uh, parameters in, in our setup uh, to, to go further. So let's go more in detail. Uh, so it starts with uh, material parameters. So those of you familiar with composite design uh, would find a, uh, familiar face here. It looks a bit the same, um, but the, it's not called composite because the ambition with this role is to actually offer something uh, more generic uh, composite as well as uh, isotropic, like metal, uh, could be also uh, put in the long run. For the first release that we have, it's still focusing just on composite. And we introduce here some, uh, some laminates, and I want to um, show you here the thickness ratio one that's a very interesting one it's brand new uh, we define for each material a ratio of of the various orientation of course it has to add up to to uh, 100 uh, percent uh, and you define a target thickness and uh, and that's going to be really useful you'll see uh, to, to converge quickly uh, uh, what would be your your ideal structure uh, now we go into the quick grid and uh, we have put uh, in this uh, capacity uh, ways to define on the fly uh, some, uh, some uh, 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 structural elements um, to put the boundaries of the, of the cells. Uh, or you can, of course, reuse existing uh, uh, geometries to uh, intersect this surface or project onto this surface if you already have these elements. So you, you, you have the, the best of the two worlds. You define on the fly something to go quickly without bothering too much about uh, uh, the creation of the geometry, or you reuse whatever uh, exists already in your design that you see fit. 
And then after you, you start playing by putting, and you can of course multi-select uh, either uh, on the quick grid panel you see on the right hand side or directly on the 3D, uh, you select the cells and you assign uh, some, some existing laminate you've defined just earlier. To start your hypothesis, uh, uh, putting, uh, putting a, a th thick uh, area where you, where you think it needs to be there and making something a bit lighter uh, wherever you think it can be, uh, it can be lightened. So you have, of course, ways to display some information at that stage, like the, the overall thickness, the number of plies you have, to make sure that uh, whatever you've input actually makes sense uh, at that stage. And of course, you can revise if, if need be. So what you see here is really real-time uh, uh, demonstration, and it, uh, it's not called a quick grid for, for nothing, as you can see. And if you're used to the composite grid that has been in the composite design roles for, for quite a while, uh, you would find it uh, uh, very similar, but actually much, much faster. So of course, numerical analysis is, uh, is available here also to, to assess that uh, you've uh, uh, adequately uh, defined everything on your, on your surface. At that stage, well, it's time to go into the finite element modeling. It's gonna be fairly, fairly transparent uh, you create a mesh uh, by putting as a support for your mesh your your grid basically, and uh, and constraining uh, by the uh, by the elements uh, of the of, well the structural elements you've you've used in your quick grid uh, definition uh, to make sure your elements are are well constrained by these uh, by these borders. So here in this tool, we, we have uh, utilized the standard uh, finite element capabilities offered by the Simulia uh, roles. So uh, those of you familiar with it uh, should, uh, should uh, be up and running very quickly with this, uh, with this tool. So here we capture uh, the various constraints of the FEM and making sure that we get a satisfactory FEM in the end. So here I keep on uh, going with the demonstration so that you, you, can, you can keep this as a, as a reference whenever you want to play with the tool. Here you can notice that on the tip here with the mesh size we have taken, some simplification is, uh, is done automatically so that you can uh, you can go ahead and edit and, and make sure you want to uh, uh, not simplify your, your geometry and make sure you have elements going uh, everywhere. Once you're happy with your, with your finite element uh, model here, uh, just make sure to, uh, to go and perform automatically a, a core sample uh, of the composite material at, at each position of each element, uh, uh, directly uh, using the using the grid information. Once again, fairly transparent. Uh, we'll go now to uh, in, into the the dedicated uh, tool to display uh, the computed uh, sections to make sure uh, the translation between uh, the grid into the section properties is is just all right. Once again, relying on the standard uh, Simulia capabilities for, uh, for, the, for the visualization of the finite element uh, uh, properties with, with composite materials. In particular, uh, the Ply stack plot viewer, very useful, um, very useful uh, tool, uh, where you see for each element um, uh, a representation uh, symbolized of the of the of the stacking with the various orientation and and materials. If you were to put several uh, materials, and and of course the global uh, the global thickness. 
once again, this is just a basic checkup uh, to make sure uh, uh, you've correctly uh, defined your, your material. Uh, but then again, you don't have to go through all this phase uh, at each point. But it's just to, to illustrate. So here we use the thickness ratio. And you can know that actually uh, many plies are with, connected with the same um, orientation. That's very that's all that's all natural actually because thickness ratio at that stage we just don't care really about the the, the sequence of plies. So when we define that there is uh, like ten plies uh, basically in, in in like zero orientation, then they are all on top of each other. So uh, for sure at that stage we are going to perform some uh, structural simulation where um, the the order of the plies does not really matter. If it was to matter, uh, we would use a, a different way to define this laminate. That would be the stacking sequence, which in this case, the order of the plies is really useful. And for stacking sequence, we have capability, of course, to uh, export and import uh, existing laminates, uh, ordered laminates that um, uh, could be in an Excel spreadsheet format, for instance. So still going on with, uh, with the display, we are going to look at the, at the global uh, global thickness of the finite element. Uh, with a thick representation and a factor to actually highlight the, the differences. Once again, making sure that what you've input is, is correctly uh, interpreted at all stages. Uh, but then again, uh, once you're, you're confident in your model, you don't have to, to go through all these phases and you can just jump into the uh, structural analysis uh, Right on. So, uh, as again, you know, like if you were to change something at that stage or later, uh, if you think you need to put some reinforcement, uh, just go back to your uh, to your grid, and on the fly you can just uh, uh, add some more uh, structural elements, like we'll see. So directly, automatically, it creates some new cells, manages the numbering and all that. And on these selections of cells here, we are going to put a, a different laminate uh, to reinforce this, uh, this section. There you go. Your grid is updated. And uh, by the way, you have defined your uh, finite element modeling, everything is associative at that stage. You just need to uh, just go ahead and update and um, your reinforcement is taken into account right away. There we go. So at that stage, um, uh, We'll just go ahead and uh, go on with our finite element uh, analysis. So, of course, checking that once again that it correctly uh, has taken into account the, the reinforcement. There you go. You see the reinforcement as we have just defined it in the, in the grid. All right. Now we keep on uh, with our uh, structural simulation. We are going to put uh, typically uh, boundary conditions and, and loads uh, onto our um, onto our frame. We simplify a bit uh, 
the view so that it's easier to, to handle. Static perturbation stack. So it's good to know that with this role, um, we, we're offering some uh, uh, linear capabilities for uh, structural simulation. Uh, we are not going into the full-blown non-linear capacities that Simulia, Simulia could, could offer. Uh, we stick just to uh, static perturbation. Uh, we offer also uh, four CPU of uh, embedded compute capacity, so you don't need to uh, really to, to go purchase additional uh, uh, simulation tokens or, or credits to, to, to run a simulation, uh, as long as it sticks for, with four CPU, which uh, should be fine for this type of, of simulation and, and model size. So we'll see here uh, that you can just specify that you would uh, perform your simulation with your embedded uh, uh, capabilities that, that, that's come with, uh, with a, and run your simulation. And then uh, you will be able to uh, to display uh, to display the results um, of it. And of course, directly see the effect of the hypothesis you've made on your uh, uh, material uh, material distribution on your on your surface. So here we have the displacement, a typical uh, post-processing capacity that, that comes um, naturally with a, with a simulation. You can also look, of course, as uh, uh, stress, like uh, uh, as it is a composite material, it's good not to perform a von Mises that uh, tends to hide what's going on in the various directions. Uh, and if we wanted to have some uh, composite specific uh, post-processing output, uh, we need to request it uh, actually before launching the simulation uh, because it's not uh, by default uh, one that's going to be uh, uh, computed in, in your simulation. But you can uh, ask here to, to uh, output some uh, composite specific uh, criteria uh, such as uh, Tsai Hill, Tsai Wu, and, uh, and other uh, uh, failure criteria uh, that uh, the Abacus solver uh, offers. So unfortunately, if you have not thought of that earlier, you need to just uh, uh, relaunch your, your simulation so that this uh, output would actually be uh, uh, computed and stored uh, uh, with, your, with your simulation results. There you go. And at that stage, well, I would say now you can play. You know, um, you can see your Tsai Hill uh, criterion is fairly low. So obviously with this loading, uh, uh, probably you can uh, uh, you can optimize your your, your structure and, and probably shred some uh, shred some weight. So I just illustrated uh, that we didn't spend too much time uh, into the the internal stiffener. At that stage, it's going to be mostly uh, handled um, through the finite element analysis. You can put on your structural elements that you've defined with the quick grid uh, some, uh, some beam properties uh, directly uh, input in the, in the FEM. Later on with this role, we are going to offer uh, also uh, much more uh, capabilities to define your stiffeners. Um, and, uh, and and create underlying geometries uh, much more refined for, for them. So once again, this is a, this is a fairly young uh, tool um, and also another big area uh, where we want to go, as I said, is to offer uh, not just for composite materials, but uh, what we would call the generic grid uh, that can address also uh, isotropic materials like, like metals. So, now that we've spent uh, quite some time on the on the what we do on shells, 
uh, want to introduce a, a different workflow, start the same, one, two, three, four, uh, but then we are going to reduce the model and go into uh, uh, what we see on, on the top of the screen, where we are going to reduce our model actually into a 1D beam, if it makes sense, of course, if the, if the structure uh, is, is one where um, it would make sense to, to, to reduce it to, to a 1D beam. So I'll show you that in, in a bit more detail, how we reduce uh, into an equivalent beam uh, that, of course, would be much, much faster to solve. And, uh, and, and then to converge, we would go back to our definition on the 2D uh, and uh, that should speed up uh, very much the, the process. So here, uh, typically, uh, we think that uh, like a, a wind wind blade um, could be a good a good example. So we have various grids here in the uh, the, the, the upper lower uh, external surface, as well as the uh, stiffener, the main stiffener inside the, inside the, the blade. We'll use we'll use uh, this uh, yellow center line to be the support of the of the one D one D beam element that would represent the entire uh, wind blade, and we calculate for each of these various sections uh, the equivalent uh, inertia properties it has based on the grids the various grids we have. We then apply some loads and boundary conditions onto this uh, this beam. And, and solve it. And of course, it goes much faster because you have way less uh, uh, degrees of freedom in your in your finite element model. But for uh, some KPIs like the max displacement here, uh, this gives you a fairly good indication as to how your overall blade behaves. And uh, you can therefore uh, quickly um, uh, converge your, your properties and go much faster into uh, refining something that's going to be a very good candidate for your for your structure. Uh, one thing I want to mention also with this role, because, you know, once you've set up all of this, um, as you can see, it's all connected in the platform and now you can play, you know, everything is open as um, knowledge parameters. So we have put in the packaging of this role, uh, parametric design study, uh, an app uh, coming from, from Simulia uh, that offers a great capacity for design exploration. So, uh, you know, once your model is uh, well parameterized and here uh, we are showing how you can, um, you know, play with uh, uh, structural element position as well as uh, playing with, uh, with the target thickness of the, of the thickness ratio uh, laminate that we've seen earlier. Uh, we have put in a, in a design table some uh, predefined pre um, uh, type of laminates, making sure the ratio always adds up to uh, 100%. And uh, we can shuffle all of that now into uh, basically a design of experiment uh, where we are going to give a range for each of these parameters and uh, and see how this uh, this model behaves uh, when we play with some of these uh, uh, key parameters. So it's all integrated in the platform. Uh, no need to go uh, anywhere. Um, it, it's it, you know all the exposed um, parameters are uh, accessible. And uh, here we have a, what we call the design space uh, check. Um, so for each uh, point of the design of experiment where we vary some of the parameters, we make sure the update of the model goes goes well and uh, that is ready to, to go into further studies. So that's where we say uh, now we can play because uh, uh, once it's all you know well-defined like that, then you can really explore uh, and perform some sizing into your, your structure uh, to go, uh, to go assess uh, if it's, uh, if it's a good uh, if it's a good candidate uh, for your for your structure. So, for instance, you can uh, put as an output, uh, for instance, of your finite element you would put on these models that I've just uh, shown here. You can uh, you can ask to output uh, the the global mass, 
to 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 see uh, to see how it evolves. Uh, you can also have some uh, sensors for uh, uh, buckling or uh, uh, outside heel criterion um, to make sure uh, at each point uh, that it's uh, satisfactory. So I want to say one word also of uh, where this role would fit in, in our existing uh, fairly comprehensive portfolio, especially on, on the composite end-to-end -end solution. So you would see a uh, position on this on this spiral here, uh, the various stages uh, where we have uh, uh, solutions from various brands to, to come and position. So of course, uh, this one here is a good fit to start, to start your engineering process with concept design, preliminary design, uh, where uh, the, the structural behavior is really uh, the, the driver for your for your sizing. Uh, the good thing is, you know, uh, the quick grid, uh, whatever you've put there, is fully compatible uh, with the grid in uh, in composite design. So at that stage, you know, there is not even data translation. Once uh, you you are you are happy with uh, uh, what you've come up. Um, as, as an hypothesis of your of your design uh, with Stephen uh, Stephen structure engineer, uh, the model can just be uh, given to a, a composite uh, designer for uh, a detailed design, taking into account more uh, design rules. Uh, but there is no no loss of uh, of, of data. It's fully compatible. It's also fully compatible with the rest of the Simulia portfolio. So if you need to go into a, um, more uh, non-linear uh, uh, simulation to study more precisely some, some behavior, uh, you can do so also directly from the modeling you've done in this, uh, in this tool. In terms of packaging, uh, in Twix uh, GA, this role, uh, Stephen Structure Engineer from Katia, uh, would be put in two uh, IPEs, uh, industry process experiences, uh, for uh, aerospace and defense in aerospace structural engineering uh, that belongs to co-design to target industry solution experience, and in aerospace concept structural engineering that belongs to the winning concept uh, industry solution experience. You'll find it also in the marine and offshore uh, boat composite uh, industry process experience and in industrial equipment in the composite parts engineering uh, industry process experience. That's for the beginning. That's to cover also the main industries uh, where uh, we see great value uh, with this role. To conclude, uh, the key takeaways I want you to have uh, with this tool, the new Katia role, uh, that's going to be uh, of uh, general availability in uh, are 2023X. Uh, it offers one key app, uh, that's a Stephen Structure Concept app, uh, that's an all in one mode SIM application that offers also four CPUs of uh, embedded computation. Uh, it's fully scalable and compatible with Katia and Simulia portfolio, even though it comes already uh, with. Uh, 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 nice features from, from both brands, actually, um, like uh, generative shape design and uh, uh, linear structural simulation with the Abacus solver. Uh, right now, the focus is on composite. Uh, but of course, we, we won't stop there. You know, there is no composite in the name. Uh, it's really for a generic grid uh, that would allow you to uh, find the best compromise, including what would be the best material and the best thickness you can find for your for your material, and we'll go also into a much more refined definition of the stiffeners as we as we go on. And it's available on premise and on the cloud. Uh, and and uh, for early adopters, it, it's also available in the uh, 22x uh, portfolio, fully uh, maintained, documented, and, and and supported. So that's about it for today. I'm very happy to have uh, to have presented you to to have introduced to you this uh, this new this new tool. We are very excited about it, and uh, and we are also very excited to see where it's where it's heading. And uh, uh, thank you thank you for uh, attending this session of Katia TV in the in the heart of summer. 
and uh, I look forward to to your question and, uh, and discussing uh, this more with you. Thank you. Ok, c'est dans la boîte. Top. Ben voilà. Bon, c'était c'était bon le son, ça allait. Ouais, ça. ouais, ouais. Tout est nickel. Bon. Surtout, tu te poses pas de questions là-dessus. C'était il y a, y a pas du tout de fausses notes. Euh, donc je coupe le début bon. et puis après je fais je fais mon intro. Ouais, puis, le début, euh, désolé, voilà. je me suis un peu. Euh, ah non, mais t'inquiète pas, t'as tout fait d'une traite. T'as tout fait d'une traite, c'est ouais. très bien. Voilà, bon. Bah, Top. Parfait. Super. Ça marche. Euh, attends, je vais faire end broadcast. J'ai tout de suite.